At the start of the pandemic, there were so many conversations within the design community, within the architecture community, about how those skills could be put to use. We were really inspired by the mutual aid efforts that were cropping up all over the city. We decided that we were going to partner with communities who weren't able to access the resources that they needed to reopen safely. And as soon as we had the community partners, within like six weeks, we had some around 70 firms who said, we want to help, you know, put us to work. We, as the design community, went to these neighborhoods and asked them how we could help. Our neediest businesses in our district were not able to access government assistance because they lacked the English skills or they, they did not know how to interpret the rules. Helping them to sign up and doing that for them gave them a bit of the courage they needed to take advantage of these programs. Every single business that was assisted through the Neighborhood Now program at the height of the pandemic survived. But after six weeks, the kinds of things that our community partners most wanted to do was help their communities heal and recover from the pandemic. People were really getting afraid to leave their own homes. We really wanted to claim space in our own neighborhood, bring lights, create a critical mass to uh, celebrate with us our cultural heritage, having the chance with Neighborhoods Now to realize that it was an amazing opportunity. The Night Market is this open air festival that we hold uh, once a month during the summers. You would always overhear conversations saying, this is the first time I came out since the lockdown. Yeah. It's a community reunion. Brooklyn Business Centre. Their ultimate goal was to bring more traffic to their local businesses. This initiative called Backyard Tourism, it comprises of self-guided walking tours curated by community organizations. And those walking tours pair points of interest based on music, arts and culture, history, with local businesses along the way. It's about community narrative. It's about community highlighting things that are special. Backyard Tourism has come along now to give that platform to these businesses that you've helped nurture and grow so far. Every time I don't really have the funding, Neighborhood Now says, okay, we have this organization that wants to support you. Architects, engineers, oh, we have such a marketing crew, our marketing team, their business is in our communities. Our community has always been made up primarily of small moms and pop stores. We really wanted to find out exactly where they were post-pandemic. So we're looking at an assessment that the Neighborhood Now team is doing for us. We found a lot of things in the needs assessment. Public space was a big one. So Neighborhoods Now put together a, a multidisciplinary team so that we could all work together on a public realm and retail improvement district plan. Neighborhood Now is allowing us to do the work that by ourselves we could not do to then leverage dollars that will actually implement some of the strategies. We're trying to think about how is a neighborhood culturally dynamic and diverse with both community members and with the designers from Neighborhoods Now. We tried to imagine what could we accomplish in 20 years from now. The theme of that became how public spaces might be activated in creative ways. Just that process of being able to look at something and say, oh, wow, it could be that, <laughs> creates momentum, motivation. We've been working with the Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition, and one project that they're really coalescing around is the use of the Kingsbridge Armory, which has been sitting vacant for, for decades now, and several plans on how to use that space have come and gone, and the immediate Kingsbridge community has had very little input. The design team has been supporting NWBCCC on a needs assessment about what, you know, what the Kingsbridge community really needs. I think this is really going to be what helps us make the case for what's possible. It's a wonderful thing to create partnerships, real partnerships that are respectful of what is in a neighborhood now, what's the history of the neighborhood. You don't do to the neighborhood, you do it with the neighborhood. People think that certain communities don't deserve certain things. 
And our job as architects is to always fight for the fact that they do. When it comes to city planning, a lot of time is coming from top down, but through this kind of interventions, people will study to learn how to make their needs heard. So if we could go down this route of community-led design, participatory design, and flipping the power structure, we're gonna start moving in a route where cities, neighborhoods, districts, right, start to look the way that the community wants them to look. And I think the work that we have done over the last three years, it shows the impact that bringing those resources, those partnerships can truly have in helping a community survive and thrive.